Hello everyone and welcome to this small tutorial in Onshape. Today we're going to be learning how to design a toroidal propeller, uh, a very popular design coming out of uh, an MIT lab. And so we're going to be doing some quick work on how to get started uh, and create the base geometry for one of these propellers. To do that, we're going to just get right into it. We're going to create our first sketch and we're going to start defining some variables in here. Uh, I recommend always defining variables by um, at least at least driving variables by actually creating a variable that will become easier to manipulate later. And then we can create a value in here, which is going to become a lot easier for us to work with. Now, the objective for my propeller today is going to be to install it in a drone. And so it's going to be pretty small. The second circle I will create is going to have a vertical coincidence with the origin point or the center point of that uh, first circle that we instituted. The second point you place does not really matter a ton for right now. We're going to define the or, or three point circle in a different way. Uh, so we've basically created two coincidence circles. The only one that's kind of important is this vertical uh, coincidence here, that's just going to make the rest of the sketch easier to define. The next thing I will do is I will actually institute some construction geometry, which is going to help me drive the rest of my sketch. Mine did not go where it needed to go. So we'll just try that again. Right. So we've basically created this construction geometry between the center point of uh, the circle uh, and the two pieces of geometry that we just put in place. Now we can also drive the angle. And finally, we can also drive the, the line length that we have uh, defining the radius. So this is where that variable is going to start becoming handy, right? Instead of having to now say 3.5, I can create a direct reference to the hub circumference, which I'm going to use. Uh, and then I can also manipulate that by saying, hey, this this outer um, propeller is going to, well, the, the outside of the propeller will have four x the, the radius of the actual diameter of the of the original hub i can also drive this with the angle so now i can get it closer or further away um, from the center of the circle and, and that's going to be very handy because we want to make sure that our propellers uh, have the correct spacing so if we wanted to check that we could do a very quick uh you know circular pattern and that's going to help us understand how closely or geometry is going to be. Now I see these gaps here, which I'm actually going to want to eliminate. Otherwise that's going to cause problems down the line. So all I need to do is change that angle that we've already defined and I can get rid of the circular pattern that we instituted. Now this is all of the base geometry that I need for this first part. Let's now create the angle at which the propeller will be getting extruded. Now we're going to take a slightly simpler approach than the original design had and we're going to define this propeller at uh, an, an angle in which we're going to do a direct extrusion and that's just going to make it easier for us. So I'm going to call this propeller angle and we can Call that 45 degrees for right now it will be very easy for us to come back here and edit it now the next thing i want to do is start generating some surface geometry that i can work with so i'll start an extrusion and i will select surface now i can generate the surface for the height of the the hub that will be attached to my drone uh, and again i want to create a new variable for this one so i will call this hub height and we'll make this six millimeters for right now this method of designing is very useful because if I ever need to create uh, a reference down the line, well, it, I know that that variable is driving uh, and that's gonna be a very simple thing to start working with. I'm just noticing that this is in the wrong sketch. So we're gonna go instead of front plane, we're gonna select the right plane and that's simply going to change the orientation at which that extrusion is going to happen. Now we're gonna create the outer geometry which is going to be defined by this uh, surface here and we're actually going to create a direction and that direction is going to be 
that 45 degree angle that we instituted earlier. Now I also want this to only extrude to the top of the hub and to do that I can actually change instead of blind to up to face and a neat trick is I can create a mate connector and just put that mate connector in the face and now you can see that well that that's going to be properly defined. So that's most of that geometry that I needed to create. Now we can start going from surfaces, which we've been defining, to parts. So to create our first part, we're actually going to offset the stop plane, and we're gonna start using those variables that we defined. So I'm actually gonna use that height variable, and I'm going to create a plane that is going to allow me to enclose this part. Now the enclosing of this part is going to be very handy because when we thicken uh, a surface, it actually creates something that is normal to that surface. So you can see that this uh, looks like some type of, of puck. But if instead of enclosing, I had chosen to thicken it, you will see that this is going to create normality to that surface. And it's going to give me a very weird donut like shape, which is not what I'm looking in the way that I'm trying to define my propeller. So instead, we're going to enclose it, and then we're going to create a shell around it, like these planes, and we're just going to quickly shell that geometry. This would be another good place where you could potentially define a new variable just to drive the, the thickness of, of these parts. Now, this next operation we'll do is we'll actually take this and create a circular pattern around the axis of the hub. Now, we're going to be working with three parts generally, but for this particular example, I'm going to do two parts and I'm going to drive this in 360 um, times. So what that's given us is simply the, the second propeller that we're going to be working with. And, and this is going to help us define the, the general geometry. So this is going to be a handy tool for us to make the cuts that we need to make so that the part is properly defined. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and split this part. So we're going to select the part to split and we're going to select the entities to split it with. We're also going to eliminate one of the two sides that we're working with. And so that very quickly gives us the general geometry that we're going to need to create a pattern around. Now, this is already pretty close to the final geometry that we will have once we have our propeller installed. This part here is construction, so we can just delete it. Again, once we delete this part, we will not be needing that. Let's show our surface again. So from here on out, I can create a circular pattern using this piece, and I can just select the axis of pattern through which that will be generated. Well, that looks a bit weird, but not to worry. We just need three parts instead of four parts, and we will actually add them all, and we're just gonna merge them all together. And just like that, we've created the base geometry for this toroidal propeller that we're working with. Now, we still have this kind of issue right in the middle, but, but that's pretty simple to fix. All we need to do is show that first sketch that we defined, we're just gonna do a solid, we're going to remove this geometry, uh, and we're just gonna remove it through all, just in case that we configure this later uh, and we don't wanna deal with it. So all of a sudden we have most of what we need to create this. The last thing we'll do is this time, I will in fact thicken that surface and I will just add it with uh, the rest of my propeller. I'll make it one millimeter like the rest of the walls. Very nice. Well, that's most of what I needed to do to have my propeller working. Now to finish things off, what I would recommend is adding some fillets so that you can have a slightly nicer surface finish, but that's most of what you need for your propeller. Let's do our fillets really quick. So we're going to install maybe some in these corners here. Right, that is going to be all she sang. 
So that fillet looks pretty nice. I think that will just work towards the general aesthetic of the propeller. Now, something I find very interesting about this design is that you can start seeing an uh, actual conventional propeller popping out here. And the deeper you make that angle, the more you'll see that starting to happen. So let's say that we actually make that 30 degrees. You start to really see that this starts showing a propeller. So I, I find that quite interesting and fascinating in the way that this design works. Um, if you do want to start playing around with this, you can, for example, go ahead and create a very simple configuration, like a configuration variable, which will control the angle. Um, and then you can select your, your angle. Let's say that our default is 40, uh, our minimum is five, and, and our maximum is going to be, um, I would say probably no more than 80 degrees. Now, if we wanted to bring that variable into our design, this is not the very best way of doing this as we are creating a redundant variable, but uh, for the sake of time, I'll show you like this. And so with this variable, I can now actually directly edit this and this will generate all types of um, variants within the design that we had. Obviously at 20 degrees, you start seeing it breaks. Um, so you might want to put some uh, bars around the region that you want that angle to work and not to work. So that, that's pretty easy to set up. You saw me do it there quick. Um, but I hope that this gave you a good intro to how to start generating this type of geometry and get working with Onshape. Hope this was fun and useful. We'll see you in the next one.